Myelodysplastic syndromes are a diverse group of bone marrow disorders responsible for impaired maturation of blood cells. As a result, patients develop an increasingly limited amount of blood cells circulating in their blood and have a significantly increased risk of developing acute myeloid leukemia. Myelodysplastic syndromes, or MDS, can be caused by many different acquired genetic abnormalities that occur in immature blood cells. The severity of MDS symptoms are classified into five categories using the revised International Prognostic Scoring System. Very low, low, intermediate, high, and very high risk. Today, we're going to be focusing on one particular case, a patient with lower risk MDS ring, sideroblasts, and anemia, as well as the absence of a 5Q deletion. The first line treatments for these are urethropoiesis stimulating agents, or ESA. But suppose the patient has been on ESA for a while now and is no longer responding to treatment. What would you do then? Many patients at this point are treated either with chemotherapy or revert back to regular blood transfusions, which are disruptive to the patient's life. Recently, the FDA approved a drug called Lucepatercept, which reduces the need for blood transfusions in between one-third and one-half of patients. Before we go any further, I just want to be super clear about something. This video isn't sponsored. We're just looking at the research as it is. All right, let's go back to the video. Lucepatercept was tested in a phase three clinical trial for patients who met the following criteria. They have MDS with ring sideroblast or some other myeloid neoplasm. They are classified with very low, low, or intermediate risk MDS. They have been receiving at least two units of blood transfusions over eight weeks, and they must no longer be responsive to ESA, be intolerant to it, or have a serum erythropoietin of over 200 milliunits per liter. In this trial, patients were excluded from participation if they had a 5Q deletion mutation, white blood cell counts of over 13, neutrophils of under 0.5, or platelets of under 50. The participants were also mostly white, male, and on average 71 years old. And here's what they found. There were 153 patients in the treatment arm and 76 patients in the placebo arm. The trial showed that 38% of people who received Lucepatercept were able to go without a blood transfusion for at least eight weeks, compared to 13% of those in the placebo group. Similarly, 28% of people who received Lucepatercept were able to go without a blood transfusion for 12 weeks or more, compared to 8% of people in the placebo group. The difference between these groups was statistically significant, but there is more to this story. Dr. Mikhail Sekerez is the chief hematologist at the Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center at the University of Miami. We asked him what he thinks this trial data tells us. On the Lucepatercept trial, the median response duration was 31 weeks. So a person was dependent on blood transfusions before the trial started, received Lucepatercept, and then 38% of those patients went a period of at least eight weeks without a blood transfusion, but a median of 31 weeks without a blood transfusion. Now, that duration of response, the period of time that person went without a blood transfusion is tricky because on the trial, that person could have gone 30 weeks without a transfusion, then received one blood transfusion, continued on the loose power step and gone another 30 weeks. You would think that should count for about 60 weeks of a person going without a blood transfusion, but by the rules of the study, that was counted as a 30-week duration. All right, so how should you dose loose patercept? The FDA suggests starting a patient at one milligram per kilogram, administered subcutaneously, once every three weeks. If after two consecutive doses, the patient still requires transfusions, consider increasing the dose to 1.33 milligrams per kilogram following the same administration schedule. And if that doesn't work after two more consecutive doses, the dose should be increased again to 1.75 milligrams per kilogram. And at this point, if the patient is non-responsive to the drug for three consecutive doses, consider ending your trial of therapy. 
As always, use your own discretion because every case is a little different. The side effects to loose powder sept were actually pretty mild. Uh, and in fact, if you look at them, you think to yourself, gee, these sound like side effects of people in general to myelodysplastic syndrome. And that's another one of the challenges of assessing side effects in a trial of myelodysplastic syndromes because people have side effects to their disease and that may be confused with side effects to the drug. The most common loose powder sept associated adverse events of any grade included fatigue, nausea, dizziness, and asthenia, just kind of a feeling of not feeling so great. So Luspatercept is an FDA-approved treatment option to reduce the need for blood transfusions in transfusion-dependent, lower-risk MDS patients with ring sideroblasts. And it works in 38% of patients. For those who are responsive to loose powder sept, many of them can expect to be blood transfusion-free for periods of over 32 weeks. Some patients may experience a period of transfusion independence, then require a transfusion, and then will have another stretch of transfusion independence. So don't stop the drug at the first blood transfusion. As for side effects, they're similar to the MDS condition itself, fatigue, muscle pain, and dizziness. We've covered a lot of information in this video. If you want to read more, we've left a link to the FDA approval label inside the video description. We've also left a link to the publication of the Phase 3 clinical trial by Fano et al. also in the video description. This is the first time we've ever made content like this, where we take a look at the underlying research of FDA-approved medications. If you liked this type of content, make sure that you like this video and you subscribe because we plan to make more of this type of content in the future. If you want to learn more about MDS, check out Dr. Sekeris' book, When Blood Breaks Down, or you can follow him on Twitter. There are thousands of cases at figure1.com, and we make videos on the most interesting ones, like our recent video on triple barrel aortic dissection. Check that video out and tune in next week for another new video.